Blog Talk Radio. You're tuned in to N5D Radio, the next dimension in radio, where we bring you the hottest, in-depth, spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric conversations and news. Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in three, two, one, 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 one. Namaste and welcome to N5D Radio, coming to you from the 99% Quartz Crystal Sands of Sarasota, Florida. I'm your host, Greg Prescott from N5D.com, and tonight we're going to raise the vibration of the planet, galaxy, and universe. Now, I created N5D to get people to think outside the box while giving positive possibilities to what we can expect in the near future. Basically, we we question everything and allow people to make up their own minds as reality is constantly changing every millisecond through our thoughts and intentions. So be careful where you place your thoughts as thoughts and intentions are manifesting quicker than ever. Joining me from the N5 studio is my co-host, Michelle Walling. How are you doing tonight, Michelle? Wow. Well, hi, everybody. I'm really looking forward to this show, and I tell you what, with Mercury in retrograde, it can only get better from here. Welcome to N5D Radio. <laughs> yes, you know, and that's the that's the first thing I thought about with with all these glitches that are going on. Apparently, you know, and we're, Corey and I were talking about this earlier, and you and I were talking about this as well. Skype had some issues going on, and uh, you know, people weren't able to use Skype at all earlier today. So there's something really funky going on right now and uh i had Corey on skype he's calling in right now so we're going to be bringing him in in a minute but uh how was your uh how was your weekend tell me a little about your weekend michelle <laughs> well since you were with me i'll share with everyone i had a great <laughs> weekend we went to fort lauderdale and i was a special guest on kelly coffee and Dwayne hartman's raw truth tour and I uh, spoke to the folks there at um, at their convention, and it was wonderful. We had a great uh, relaxing weekend, and we also met up with some uh, N5D authors. Um, you want to tell everybody who we who we had uh, lunch with on Saturday? Yeah, we we met for dinner with several N5D writers. Uh, Max Apodaca, who co-writes many articles with Lana, and Yolanda Arenas, who is an amazing tarot card reader with whom you'll be getting a reading next weekend. Yes, I can't wait. Um, She also has an ad on the right-hand side of the N5D page where you can uh, just click that ad and it goes straight to her booking. So I'm really looking forward to having that and uh, really enjoyed meeting Max for the first time. Actually, it's the first time for Yoli as well. So, yeah, and... So um, we had a wonderful weekend, and uh, we're settled back in for today. And just to let everybody know, I am unable to get into the chat room. I can see all of you. Hi, everyone. <laughs> but I'm unable uh, to log I'm logged in, but it says I'm not logged in. <laughs> so I'm unable to actually interact with you. But I can see your uh, – I can see what you're putting in there. So um, on this show tonight, we're not going to take – any callers at the end, but if you do have a very important question, be sure to put it in the chat. And I also wanted to, um, so we have all the technicalities done. I also wanted to mention um, that I have a new, um, we have a new show on N5D Radio, and that would be Candace Craw Goldman has um, QHHT Healing Show, um, and that's on Friday nights. And that's at the same time as my show, uh, which is 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, Candice is a QHHT practitioner, and uh, she is going to be bringing on practitioners as well as clients with their experiences. And that will be awesome. We already had the first show on Friday night, and you can find that, um, let's see, on Blog Talk Radio at the moment. It will be uploaded on N5D's YouTube channel soon. 
And um, then my um, Cosmic Awakening show, you can always catch on Thursdays at 8 p.m. Don't want to plug that too much here. We're just talking about how much N5D has expanded. And, Greg, we also have the N5D network where I get on and act like a fool and have my picture taken. <laughs> <laughs> I have videos of certain topics that I, um, you know, that I get an idea and I get on video. So, anyway, um, all all of the N5D shows can be found on iTunes. We also have classics like Helene Lipson's show with Matt Kahn. And Greg and Heidi interviewed Dolores Cannon. And one of my favorite shows of mine is uh, Dr. Simon Atkins, which has something like crazy 80,000 views on YouTube. So I'm really grateful for that to be able to get information out to people. So, yeah, let's get right to it, Greg. Yeah, well, also I just want to add, be sure to check out our N5D YouTube channel where we have over 113,000 subscribers and literally hundreds of videos. So definitely check that that out. Uh, So, Michelle, I'm really excited about tonight's show. Would you like to introduce our guest? I sure would. Identified as an intuitive empath, which is IE, with precognitive abilities, Corey Good was recruited through one of the MyLab programs at the young age of six. Good trained and served in the MyLab program from 1976 to 1987. Towards the end of his time as a MyLab, he was assigned to an IE support role for a rotating Earth delegate seat shared by the secret Earth government groups and a human-type ET super federation council. My lab is a term coined for the military abduction of a person that indoctrinates and trains them for a number of military black ops programs. Good's IE abilities played an important role in communicating with non-terrestrial beings, termed interfacing, as part one of the secret space program, SSP, as short for Secret Space Program. During his 20-year service, he had a variety of experiences and assignments, including the Intruder Intercept Inter- <laughs> Interrogation Program. You know, they have all these um, these letters for all these <laughs> programs they have. Um, assignment to the ASSR ISRV, which is called the Auxiliary 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 Specialized Space Research interstellar class vessel, <laughs> much more. And this all occurred in a 20 and back agreement from 1986 to 2007 with recall work until the personal day, present day. Good now works in the information, technology, and communications industry for, with 20 years' experience in hardware and software virtualization, physical and IT security, counter-electronic surveillance, risk assessment, and executive protection, and all that means don't mess with Corey, and served in the Texas Army State Guard from 2007 to 2012, C4I, which is Command, Control, Communications, Computation, and Intelligence. Time in the Texas Military Forces was unrelated to the Secret Space Program Service. Good continues his IE work now and is in direct physical contact with the Blue Avians of the Spear Being Alliance, who have chosen him as a delegate to interface with multiple ET federations and councils on their behalf, liaison with the SSP Alliance Council, and to deliver important messages to humanity. So with all that being said, with that wonderful introduction, Corey Good, welcome to Inside the Radio. Thank you. I need to come up with an abbreviated version for hosts, don't I? <laughs> it's all of those <laughs> letters and all those long terms, but we're really glad to have you on the show tonight and apologize for all of the technical difficulties and what we'd like to do this evening. Uh, oh, by the way, you and I actually grew up no, no less than 30 miles away from each other in, in uh, the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Isn't that something? Interesting, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, you had a <laughs> way different childhood than I did. <laughs> as you were off uh, traveling around to Mars and different places like that. Uh, so, <laughs> but, um, so I appreciate you joining us tonight, and what we'd like to do is we're going to get right into the questions. And uh, Greg, go ahead with your first question. All right. Well, I wrote an article on N5B <clears throat> called Corey Good's Gaim TV Interview and Voice Analysis. I have this uh, voice analysis software that analyzes people's voices and can tell me whether they're standing in their truth 
if they're right-brained, which is the creative side of their brain, or left-brained, which is the analytical side, which notes in their cadence are the strongest and what notes, what each note represents and so on. So first of all, I'd like to thank you for sharing that article on your Sphere Alliance Facebook page, Corey. Sure. And, yeah, uh, that was interesting. Yeah, thank you. You know, after, after running a voice analysis on you, I determined that you firmly believe in what you're telling people. Additionally, your voice analysis – go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Sorry. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll let you go, – go ahead. I, d I don't want to interrupt you. All righty. Well, ad additionally, your voice analysis shows that you, you are right-brained, which is the creative side, and answer more so by reaction than thinking out your answers, which is a sign of truth. Uh, that being said, how can you be sure that your thoughts and memories aren't my lab implants – where you believe what has been implanted, but it ne never actually happened. Well, I guess for the most part, every single person on this planet is a certain amount brainwashed uh, and mind controlled. So um, every one of us, there's, we're a certain amount. Um, there's a certain amount that we are uh, manipulated and controlled in the way we think and believe things. So, you know, that that's a given. But um, I have gone through a, uh, a long process, and I apologize for the sound in the background. My, uh, <laughs> local, my local network at my house went down at the same time uh, I was uh, trying to call in with you guys. Um, wow. But, yeah. Um, but... Um, there, um, there's about three to five percent of uh, people that they have a very hard time with doing the blank slating and putting in the um, uh, screen memories, and those were the intuitive empath group, and it's mainly because uh, this group of individuals has a stronger connection with their higher self light body and your memories are not only contained in your chemical uh, physical hard drive brain they are also contained in your soul or light body and that's how people actually are able to have past life memories I mean it, otherwise it would be impossible for a person to have uh, in their uh, physical brain to have past life memories when they were physically born into this life only. Mm -hmm. So when, when you have that connection to the, um, that part of your being, um, you have access to those memories. And when they're blank slating you, they are, um, what they're doing is they're accessing your sort of physical hard drive. They're going into your actual brain and playing with your brain chemistry and electromagnetic fields in your brain. So they can they they will do that with the intuitive impasse, and it will uh, sometimes it'll take shortly, but they are um, that group. They they have a they always had a very uh, uh, very big problem with uh, being able to. Uh, completely control and completely uh, 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 install screen memories on because uh, the individuals basically uh, would reboot and then have access to this uh, virtual hard drive or their uh, uh, light body soul memories. If that makes well, sense. It does make sense. You know, actually, when you think about it, we're all having a holographic experience that's run by a program, and uh, the program is a light matrix, and then we have, somehow we have this overlay from, I guess, what you call the dark beings that have infiltrated this reality and, and really have put these programs in, and that would be our education system, our political system, you know, the banking system, and we've agreed to the program, and that's what we're running here. So in a way, everybody is uh, mind-controlled, and we also have implants. I was just wondering, I did a show on implant removal just recently, 
I was just wondering if you feel like that um, that you have some implants that you're having to work through and neutralize by centering and grounding and and balancing because mm-hmm. I know you can neutralize implants by doing that. Yes. All of us have them. Yeah, yeah and, so, and in, in 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 the programs they they utilize different types of uh, implants. And uh, one of the things that uh, it's a little controversial, and uh, when I got onto this topic, this is where I had uh, kind of a falling out with the original people I was talking to because people have their own personal belief systems about this. But uh, they use entity attachments um, to um, as gatekeepers. So I had access to these memories but they used entity attachments, these dark entities uh, that they would attach to your soul body. And uh, you would be able to access these memories, but whenever you would try to talk about it, you would, uh, you would stammer, have a speech impediment. uh, You would uh, have an anxiety attack. You would, uh, um, you would just be unable to, speak it out loud, even though you would have the memory of it. And that was kind of a fail safe. And, uh, Mm -hmm. and uh, I, you know, I found (laughs) that I had a uh, entity attachment um, and uh, I had to, uh, and there was a number of ways to remove them. And, uh, you know, I coming from a, uh, I guess more of a, uh, uh, Christian background, I used the name of Jesus in my uh, case, and uh, other people use different methods. And uh, I was able to remove that entity attachment. And uh, when and it ended up that there were quite a few entity attachments, and this one was the gatekeeper. Mm. And uh, when uh, the entity attachments were removed, I all of a sudden was able to speak out loud about it and was able to uh, write. I would have to kind of sneak around the entity attachment even when I was writing. I had to write uh, vaguely about it and write around the subject. Or if I would talk, I'd have to talk around the subject. I I couldn't talk directly about uh, my experiences or directly about, uh, you know, certain aspects of what I was involved in because... Uh, this entity attachment that actually called itself the gatekeeper prevented me from doing so. And I know that sounds bizarre to a lot of people, but a lot of people that listen to this information, it doesn't sound bizarre to you. No, it doesn't. I mean, as I had, um, I think, well, first, first of all, by taking on a human body, I think we made an impl- implied agreement at this time to take on a human body in the fine print. It said, oh, and by the way, we're going to attach certain entities to your chakras so that we can control your emotions and take your energy from you. <laughs> so it doesn't mm-hmm. really sound, yeah. It doesn't. So, uh, and, you know, those can come back as well. So what we have to do, and I know that what you talk about a lot, Corey, is is basically, you know, living your life in truth and love and compassion. And uh, that really actually, I'm going to be doing a show on the Cosmic Awakening show in two weeks about how to um, neutralize these implants because this is all this is what we're doing here with ascension is we're raising our vibration and we're neutralizing this control mechanisms that this um, holographic insert has on us and that's how we're going to free ourselves. Yes, and with these uh, energy changes that are occurring, these uh, different types of etheric and uh, entity and all these different types of attachments, they're having a, 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 a lot more difficulty hanging on to us. And um, they live in, uh, in a lot of people, like if, uh, there are certain types of attachments that people have. Like if you live with a person that is kind of a, a vampire type, uh, they treat you badly and they seem to vampire off of your, uh, uh, your fear or your anxiety when when they treat you badly, well, a lot of times that person has some sort of an attachment that is uh, feeding off of that louche, I guess, and is also 
sharing that energy with that person in a symbiotic kind of relationship. And um, as we're getting into this higher frequency part of the galaxy, these, uh, these beings are not going to be able to handle this frequency. And uh, a, lot, a lot of people that have these, uh, what I was told by the uh, Blue Avians is that um, a lot of these, uh, especially the entity attachments, at some point in the future, are not going to be able to exist in this energy field. They're going to, what they called, they said, was be cast back into the outer realm where they came from. And the people that have had these entity attachments are going to go kind of like through heroin withdrawal. That, you know, they've gotten used to this uh, symbiotic relationship with these attachments, and they've been sharing this energy with them that they've been vampiring off of other people. So... Um, you know, it's this uh, topic that you're going to be talking about is a very important one, and because uh, a lot of people are going to be faced with these attachments, because they're going to start seeing them and noticing them a lot more, because they're starting to, you know, vibrate loose. They're starting to become more apparent because they're having a hard time hanging on. Okay. Yeah. I totally agree, and I really appreciate you talking about this subject because it is very important. I don't want to put fear in anybody, and that's really why we're having this discussion, to give as much oh, information no. it's, as it, possible it should, to people. It, instead of scare someone, it should empower them. It should make them uh, to know that uh, the, the time is short for these types of uh, uh, attachments and implants, that uh, they can exist in uh, – in a, in a loving person and a higher frequency person and in a higher frequency environment, that that's good news. That's not bad news. So what you're saying, though, is that while some people work on removing attachment, attachments from other people and they have that gift, what you're saying is that basically other people and everyone else that doesn't have them evolved will eventually have them removed but they'll have to go through like almost like a heroin like addiction type scenario. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. All righty. Well, that's good now, for the healers to know what's going on. Yeah, and and a lot of these people will just be acting really bizarre, kind of like uh a lot of people uh use the word like kind of like an end time madness kind of behavior. Um, you know, and and it will it'll be very similar to someone coming off of an opiate, uh cold turkey. And, um, you know, these, the people, they will have, uh, you know, physical symptoms and uh, they'll, they'll, um, they'll be acting out sometimes uh, very aggressively. And, th- I mean, there will be uh, symptoms that a lot of these uh, healers, uh, Reiki-type people, white workers, uh, will recognize and um, be able to, to move in and, and, and help the people with. Well, um, what's going to happen is, you know, they're going to find themselves without a source of energy because they haven't found the energy within themselves. And um, like you said, they're going to be flipping out and some people are going to get sick. And unfortunately, um, some people will be leaving, you know, uh, eventually leave their body as they live out the rest of their life on the planet. But I just want everybody out there to know that on a soul level, everybody here already has a place. Um, a vibration, a dimension to be going to, and it's uh, based on, you know, your soul experiences as well as how far you've gotten in this particular lifetime in awakening and doing the work needed to raise your vibration and neutralize these implants. So, so Greg, you know, you another have, thing, uh, too, yeah. another thing, too, just um, I, I, that I wanted to bring up, Michelle and I have noticed this, and I'm sure you've noticed this as well, Corey, that uh, you know, there's a lot of dissension going on amongst spiritual groups, and uh, you know, you know, you see people calling out other people. I'm not going to name names, and I'm not going to call out those people who are doing that because they know who they are, and uh, it's it's not worth my time and effort to sink down to their level. Are you noticing the same thing? You know, all this division amongst spiritual groups. You know, the whole divide and conquer conquer chaos thing. Yeah. Yes, and you know, I, I've written an article about that, about uh, keeping your uh, reality bubble permeable, and uh, you know, developing, uh, you know, uh, and, and it's a very touchy subject for a lot of people. A lot of people have developed their own UFO religions and uh, belief systems, and it's 
it's hard not to do. We are genetically programmed. We've been genetically tinkered with to, uh, to look to worship a higher being, to look to uh, uh, look for a leader, a guru, and that kind of a thing. And instead of looking inwardly at, and, and try to develop our own co-creative consciousness and raise our own vibrations. So, um, yeah, it's, um, it's, you know, I, I'm not going to focus on any people or group in particular either, but, you know, this is also something that was done, has been done by design. And, uh, you know, ufology and, and all these different groups, uh, there, there have been people that have infiltrated it since, you know, the fifth, early 1950s. And uh, they've uh, wanted all of these people that they're um, at their root. They just want to love and they want to grow, but they move in and they want to keep these people fragmented and uh, at each other's throats instead of working together. Because they know that if we work together lovingly, and uh, our co-creative consciousness, consciousness together, and uh, you know we we <laughs> we're, we're very powerful. So if mm-hmm. they can keep us divided and arguing about our different esoteric theologies, then uh, you know they're not necessarily winning, but uh, they're putting off the inevitable. Yeah, they're they're keeping us distracted, basically. You know, look over exactly. here and focus on this while. We should be moving ahead and forward. Um, now, I've, I've seen numerous orbs of various colors all throughout my lifetime. Some people have claimed that all orbs are artificial intelligence, which I personally <laughs> believe is New Age disinfo. Do you believe that all orbs are artificial intelligence? No, and uh, if, if you've noticed, this is something that has come out fairly recently. Um, yeah. <sighs> This one of the one of the major things that I started talking about about nine months ago was I started talking about the uh, major uh, extra dimensional uh, ET uh, AI threat. That's uh, uh, a, a major threat throughout multiple galaxies. Ma- multiple ET groups are leery of AI of this AI in particular. And um, uh, the secret space programs heavily screen for any type of AI signal overlay in your, um, uh, like it's kind of like they do at EEG on you. And if there's more than one signal, you know, they can tell there's an AI signal. If there's any type of sign that you've been influenced by nanotechnology, they, these, there's a certain faction of the cabal group that are what we call AI prophets. And they have been using this AI that has a very, uh, very accurate uh, probable future uh, uh, type of program that has helped them stay one step ahead from being arrested or um, caught. Uh, uh, you know, there's, there's been several times that there's, there's been some real programs that have been announced you know that you know they were about to take down the cabal, and the, this cabal group has been able to stay one step ahead using this uh, this AI technology, and uh, a lot of them see it as a god, and uh, a lot of uh, the information that's been released about this has gotten them really upset. So uh, what they're doing is they're doing the you know kind of kindergarten, I know you are, but what am I kind of thing. Um, Anything that is uh, sphere related, orb related, or blue avian related, now all of a sudden it's uh, artificial intelligence psyop. Well, I've noticed I've noticed that, and um, you know, it's it's really funny because they they're panicking right now because of this wave of energy that, as you know, is um, already bathing the planet, but is supposed to be really strong here um very good timing for this show because this week and uh next week we really should be able to see some uh evidence of um some energetic forces that are bathing the planet that will pretty much shake things up and i've noticed that we've been able to see the truth come out on people who um 
really, you know, before were saying, I mean, they could have said things for years that was the truth, but now they were just kind of hanging out a while and now they're not able to lie anymore and <laughs> their their true colors are coming out. So we're we're being able to use better discernment and that's that's really good. That helps out a lot. And um so I was wondering if you wouldn't mind giving us giving our listeners a little bit of clarification on what you see this wave of energy coming to the planet as originating from and how it will begin to affect people here besides the fact that you already said that some people are going to be actually when they feel it they're going to you know it's going to shake their world apart it's actually literally vibrating things that don't uh resonate with it apart but how will it affect those of us who are you know doing our work um will it give us psychic powers that we didn't have before what is your take Okay, well, I'll, I'll start back um, back in uh, the secret space program. They they've been studying this back since at least the '80s. The uh, the energetic changes that are coming, and um, it's it's not just this super wave that's coming from the center of the galaxy that people are talking about. Uh, these uh, waves have been coming from the center of the galaxy uh, like crazy. And it's it's been picking up in frequency for a while. I mean, this this is happening. But what's also been happening is that our local star cluster and solar system is traveling through this torus or torsion, giant torsion field that is our galaxy, and it's heading into a very high vibratory area of the galaxy. And they for a long time, they were actually sending vessels out. And these are actually clouds of high energetic particles, giant clouds of high energetic particles. And we are heading into these giant clouds of high energetic particles as well. So, that, you know, this, it's not only these waves coming in from the center of the galaxy. I, I just wanted to make that clear because I hear so much about the X waves coming in from the center of the galaxy. This is something that they they were studying for 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 decades now, and we're sending craft out to uh, to study these giant interstellar clouds of energy that our star system was. They knew that our star system was heading into. So we have a question in the chat room, actually. That's related to sure. this, um, and it's from K- Kim Burnett. And Kim wants to know, have the SSP actually found a way to measure these incoming waves? Well, yes, they, the, 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 those wave, they, they measure the incoming uh, waves from the, the center of the galaxy. They measure uh, cosmic waves of all sorts coming in from all directions at all times because there's a lot of different interaction that can occur, especially when they're doing portal travel, when certain types of cosmic uh, energy cross each other. There's a cross point, if, uh, and it can, it can cause feedback throughout this uh, uh, cosmic web. So uh, that's why they have a very, uh, very complicated uh, uh, hyperdimensional mathematics uh, model that they use for calculating uh, a lot of this portal travel, and they also have to pay close attention to and have probes out to measure and detect all these different types of waves of cosmic radiation and uh, that are coming in from the center of the galaxy and coming out from other parts of the cosmos. Mm-hmm. Now, now speaking of measurements, um, here's something I'm curious about. Time is only relevant to this planet, you know, 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year, 12 months in a year. How do other galactic races track time? Do they have calendars or clocks? Well, uh, they use, depending on on their 
local star system, they usually have kind of like what we have, like some sort of standard Zulu time or uh, some sort of standard time uh, for for their uh, local star system. And wherever they go uh, in the universe, they're working off their local star system time in, in their um, – uh, I guess they're to keep their circa- their type of circadian uh, rhythm going, and uh, we do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So when you attend these alliance meeting meetings, how do other attendees know what the local star system time is in conjunction with everyone else, and on which particular day it would be? I don't know that they are given the other people's time i think they are given the information in their time but the the groups that are attending the, these meetings are these people are stationed here in our in our star system they're living in embassies in our star system uh usually under our oceans under underground on our planet on moons or on other planets, planetoids. Uh, there's a lot of activity in the Kuiper Belt. They are most of these groups. Uh, they're pretty much live in pretty much embassies here in in this uh, soul system. Well, I have a, a question. Um, is in the chat room? Is there a specific date for the energetic wave to end? And will Mm. Will disclosure automatically happen when the wave ends? Well, the this uh, like I said, we're talking about uh, we have this uh, these energetic waves that people are talking about that are coming from the center of the galaxy, but we have just begun to enter these energetic these high energy clouds. Uh, I mean, only since. I believe like the 1930s or 40s that they talked about, we started entering the outskirts of some of these clouds and we haven't really gotten into the the most dense part of, of these high energetic clouds in this part of the galaxy that we're heading into that our solar system system is heading into. So would that be the photon belt that you're talking uh, about? no, it's not. It's not the photon belt. These these are uh, actual just high energetic clouds that are dispersed um, out, and and these clouds are like the size of nebulas. They're, they're really large, and they're they're spread out through like a size of maybe um, like uh, this may even be too big, but like a, if you're looking down. Uh, on the uh, from the top of the galaxy as if it was a clock, um, maybe like uh, and, and cut it up into pies, slices of pie, maybe like a sixteenth of a uh, you know of a a slice that was maybe like a sixteenth, just a, a very small small slice uh, area of of the galaxy. We we didn't and, really get into. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead and finish. <laughs> I thought you were done. Oh, I, I I was going to 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 move on to the to the rest of your question about uh, yes. <laughs> uh, what we can expect. Um, that you know they they started to do a lot of uh, kind of some some unethical tests on on some people to try to figure that out, um, exposing uh, some people uh, in. Um, and uh, some of the, the research vessels that they took outside of the solar system, and uh, also some they try to reproduce some of these energies in uh, chambers and expose un- people unwittingly uh, to some of these energies. And uh, and the the answer is it depends totally on your polarity. If you are a uh, positive or service to others type of self, you're going to become more so. <clears throat> if you're a selfish uh, service to self kind of uh, negative person, you're going to become more so. So 
the the energy kind of uh, enhances what you already are. So it depends on what type, you know, how how you've been, um, if you've been trying to put energy into uh, yourself selfishly, then um, it's going to make you more of a selfish, negative person uh, in the beginning. And uh, people that are loving, that are out trying to uh, help other people, it's going to make them more so. But uh, it, from what uh, they have found out, everybody is going to feel um, – kind of, you know, kind of kind of going to need some drama mean, if you know what I mean. It's it's mm-hmm. kind of and um it's it's going to it's going to have an effect on us to where, you know, we're going to feel it and it's going to be a little uh, uh, confusing. Uh, it's going to cause some, you know, confusion, a little um, a little bit, you know, some social problems between, you know, fam uh families and uh um, people in the world that you know are interacting that are not of the same polarity, and as far as uh, superpowers, that also uh, is appearing to depend on the individual, um, you know how developed they are already. If they have been, uh, if they're one of these people that you know sit in a cave and meditate a lot and are working on all these spiritual uh, practices in the East and are are really advanced already, then uh, they're going to be quite a bit ahead of everybody else that are, you know, working nine to five, sitting in front of the TV every day and going to bed, waking up and repeating the process the next day. So it's going to be more of, it appears that it's going to be more of a gradual process you know, people aren't just going to wake up in the morning and then walk out, look both ways like Neo on Matrix, and then look up, put on their sunglasses, and take off and fly. Mm-hmm. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm yeah, sensing, I would, too, I, I, anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah it'd, be, it'd, it'd be nice. You know, it'd be great. But uh, uh, it's, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, I, I, I mean, I hate to, to stamp on some, some people's, some people's dreams, but, uh, you know, just it, that the evidence that I've seen inside the program and, uh, from what I've been told from, uh, you know, some, in some of these meetings, it just, it looks like it's going to be a gradual process and most of it has to do with each person's personal development. So it's like the change of seasons. How did they test, how did they do this test, Corey? Did they did they use harp or CERN to send energetic waves um, around the planet? Uh, which test? The test you said that they were already testing how this how this uh, this energy is going to affect oh, the planet. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, they were testing it on individuals in uh, in certain programs in the space programs. Uh, oh, okay. unsuspect Unsuspecting individuals, like they would. Uh, put people in a room that was a chamber and uh, tell them to concentrate and work on this project. And they would think they were working on some project and they were part of one thing when they were actually uh, piping certain energies in the room uh, that were as close as they could reproduce to the, uh, the, the high energy uh, particle clouds that they were going and uh, shooting probes into and getting information from. And uh, they were also, uh, you know, when these vessels were getting very close to the, to these, uh, these high energy clouds, uh, the, the fields from these clouds alone were affecting the people in the vessels. So um, wow. they, this is where, where they were g- gaining a lot of this information. Mm-hmm. We have a question from the chat room from Emily Benitez, who wants to know, to know what are all the best ways to ride this wave to benefit us the most? I guess I always 
I always go back to, you know, the the message, you know, that um, we need we've got to focus daily on being more and more service to others. Um, it is so important that we've got to work on being for very forgiving to those who have wronged us, and most of all, be forgiving of ourselves. And that's the hardest part: shining the light on the inside doing the inner work, finding the, the, the dark parts of ourselves that, that we try to ignore and, uh, you know, call ourselves light workers, but ignore the little dark mm-hmm. parts, shine the light on there, forgive ourselves. I've had a lot of problems with that. And, uh, and then move on and, and, and try to become more loving and uh, do all we can to learn more about raising our vibration and raise our consciousness and learn about the power of our consciousness and because we're going to, we're starting we're going to start learning more and more about the nature of the world around us that everything is vibration our thought our mm-hmm. uh you know our bodies the 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 walls around us light everything is is a is all vibration and Mm -hmm. our conscious our consciousness being thought is vibration and our co-creative consciousness together we can focus our co-creative consciousness together and we can directly affect energy and matter and therefore we can affect the our our reality Yes, that's what they, 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 they proved through that double slit experiment where focus intent changes reality. And they've proven that through the Maharishi effect, uh, virtually through the same thing, where uh, focused meditation significantly reduces uh, violence throughout cities and whatever. So, yeah, it, oh, yeah. it does make a, it makes a huge difference. And, you know, people that are still asleep have a hard time understanding that process. Now, just getting back to one last thing about time. Um, do any extraterrestrial races use astrology as a way of tracking time through various astrological cycles? I don't know. Okay. Because, well, you know, one of the things I follow here is uh, Pluto and Capricorn. And I'm seeing this mm-hmm. huge cycle. The last time Pluto was in Capricorn was in the 1700s during both the French and American revolutions. And uh, you, if you look around the world, what's going on right now? <laughs> revolutions. It's a cycle of time. And uh, what we can expect, Pluto entered Capricorn in 2008 and stays there until 2023. And right on schedule in 2008, we saw a collapse of all the these too big to fail banks well, all these banks except the two big to fail banks, and uh, we're seeing revolutions going on all throughout the world. And what it, Pluto does is it's known as the destroyer, and it tears down everything that's not in humanity's best interest. So what we can expect to see up up to the year 2023 is a collapse of money, government, and religion. And we're already seeing a collapse of all three right now. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Well, yeah, and uh, you know because. You know, we have uh, our bodies, we have a strong bioneural field, and um, the, the universe is actually a uh, bioelectric universe and a torsion field universe. All of these um, bodies in our solar system are going to have a direct connection and correlation with each person, just like I explained on Gaiam Television in, when I was talking about portals how the sun has a filament connection with every planet in our solar system, an electromagnetic mm-hmm. filament connection. And um, there's a large torsion field around the sun and every planet. Well, of course, you know that our bio neuro field around our body is a torsion field. Mm-hmm. And we're, we're going to have a type of connection with everything in our solar system as well. And when people have made the comments, everything in time and space is connected, that is literally true. Everything in this universe is connected in, in probably many different ways, but it's been proven through portal travel and uh, the uh, 
uh, hyperdimensional mathematics model they use that every single point in space and time are connected and they use that information to to travel. I was wondering about in our solar system, um, there's a lot of people out there that are talking about Saturn being the projector of this matrix and it comes from Saturn to the moon and there's programming on the moon, which you know a lot about moon the moon will be talking about that next. How does mm-hmm. Saturn play into the interaction with Earth? Because a lot of people want to blame Saturn you know, blame, uh, you know, the black box being in front of the sun and or behind the sun, and there's a lot of talk about this, but what do you know about it? Well, the Saturn has quite a lot of uh, ancient and current extraterrestrial activity. Um, I've talked about the ancient Boulder race that... Um, a lot of the Illuminati groups have tried to incorporate it into their religions and try to make them their gods. But um, when it comes down to it, even the ETs that are visiting us don't know who they were. Uh, uh, a lot of ancient ETs that came through kind of have gone by a lot of the, the ancient builder race monuments that are on other moons and, and other planets where we know there were glyphs at one time, they've been wiped off. They've been removed. Kind of like, you know, when one king comes in and they they chisel off the name of the other king off of monuments. So um, there's quite a bit of ancient builder technology uh, in in the Saturn region. So there's a, a lot of this comes from a lot of lore, so, you know, this is where, you know, I have to, I have to be careful because there's a lot of sacred cows and a lot of uh, belief systems. And, um, you know, I've, I've been stepping on a lot of toes lately, but, uh, you know, I've, uh, <laughs> I've been out there and around and, uh, you know, there's certain, there's, let's just say I've been around Jupiter uh, a lot of the area around Saturn is highly restricted from even uh, our secret space programs. There, it is, uh, there are a lot of uh, ET groups that uh, have that area uh, pretty much staked as their own. Well, is our whole solar system moving up in vibration? Yes. I mean, the whole the, universe is, the whole solar system is. So. Well, well, def- definitely our, our, not only our whole solar system, but our, there's our whole local star cluster. Uh, the whole, all of the, the local stars in, in our region, we're heading into uh, a higher vibrational area of our uh, galaxy. Uh, that's why, I mean, just like David Wilcock and some other people have pointed out that uh, we have, uh, all the all this climate change and strange anomalies that have been occurring on all the planets steadily increasing uh, each year. Uh, we have you know like these weird uh, I don't know if it's a hexagon or some sort of weird uh, uh, geographical um, anomaly that I think appeared on Saturn on its uh, I think it's North Pole um, just. There's, there's a, and, and that's caused by frequency, a change in the frequency in the, the solar system. And uh, this is translating down to people. This, you know, people are acting bizarre. I mean, if you haven't <laughs> noticed, um, you, know, oh, people yeah. are, you know, people are acting pretty bizarre. And mm-hmm. um, it's, it's, you know, and it's, it, it's, getting, it's getting more and more pronounced. And uh, it's going to increase, increase, and increase. And uh, we're going to start seeing more and more bizarre type of behavior. And um, this, a lot, you know, it's just, you know, this, this change in vibrational energy entering into our solar system is, you know, like, you know, cosmic Red Bull. <laughs> mm-hmm. With wings. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it gives you wings. <laughs> Sorry for the pun there. <laughs> no, I like right. it. I like it. I wish I would have thought of it. 
Now we have a question uh, from our N5D Facebook, um, uh, one of our members there, and he wants to know if you you can go into more detail on what's inside the moon and who built it. Well, and that question's the, coming from Mark Patnod. I'm sorry, just wanted to give him credit for that. That's okay. Um, the the I have not been allowed below a certain level of the Lunar Operation Command, which bugs the snot out of me. Um, hmm. Because, because uh, in just about every meeting that's been up there, they've been bringing between 30 and 80 civilians, just everyday people off everywhere on the planet that have been going up. And uh, these people haven't been come forward, you know, haven't been coming forward to talk about it. So I don't know if they've been told to keep quiet about it, or I know they're not, uh, they're not blank slating people now. Uh, the Alliance isn't blank slating people, but mm -hmm. uh, they're, you know, they're keeping quiet about it. But these people are being taken on a full tour of the LOC. And at, there's been a couple of times that I've seen the, uh, side view map, and I'd see that it's the LOC is narrower at the top, goes down like wider, wider at the bottom, like a shaped like a bell, and and it goes, uh, if not all the way down, pretty far down, close to uh, to the uh, uh, outer rim of uh, what the moon really is. So I have not seen what is on the inside. I've uh, I've heard rumors and information uh from people and I uh but I did read on the uh, smart glass pads that it was a uh artificial something that was created artificially that was flown into the mm -hmm. uh position the position that it is now around 500,000 years ago was uh, put into a tidal lock with the earth and left there. And uh, apparently refugees that were on board it were uh, um, supposedly many perished, but some came from that vessel to the earth. Well, Let's I was see. just wondering. Oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> I was just wondering if there's a like a hologram cover up that we actually see because there was this one guy on YouTube who had you know used his high powered uh, telescope and camera, and he actually filmed a, kind of like a glitch in the programming, the cover up. Yeah. Uh, what we're seeing. What do you know anything yeah. about that? Yeah. The uh, the. The moon has – it's basically split up kind of like Antarctica is into all kinds of uh, diplomatic zones. And uh, some of these um, – the ET groups that have been there for many thousands of years, uh, they they do have a kind of holographic uh, type of projection that they use to hide their activities. Okay, now, on one of your uh, Guy on TV episodes, you mentioned that the sun, or Sol, is an electric stargate that's being fed by some sort of waves that are hitting it. Many people have noticed that the sun has gone from a deep egg yolk yellow color to basically being white. Do you have, do you have any idea why this is happening? Yeah, it, it's because of these uh, frequency changes. It's shifting the... Uh, yeah, the star is shifting. It's also the the surface. The uh, I don't have the information in front of me now. Uh, I don't have access to my internet. I have it on my site somewhere. But uh, the there's it has uh, in the last ten years the the hydrogen bond. There's there's been a a, a change in the uh, chemistry as well on in the the surface layers. So yeah, it uh, it has definitely shifted from yellow, uh, actually 
shifted from yellow to uh, more of an orange uh, color when uh, when seen from space. Ah, okay, but from here it looks more white, doesn't it? Yeah, when viewed through yeah the atmosphere, yeah, yeah. the yeah, but uh, it's uh, it's definitely going through vibratory changes that is uh, affecting affecting it and it the 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 sun these it it is changing energy into matter it's basically a mm-hmm. giant replicator so mm-hmm. i mean it's it's pr- it's producing water it's producing hydrogen it's producing all types of uh uh things that then combine further outside and become minerals even so mm-hmm. uh the the sun is is a very a lot more complex and uh, uh nothing like what mainstream science is putting forth what it is well you know honestly the way i see it is that, you know it's it's like through alchemy as above so below as within so without what's happening on the sun is merely a reflection of what's happening to our planet and what's happening to us on an individual level we're also changing i have a feeling would you agree with that yeah Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, everybody's. That's why, you know, we're seeing, uh, you know, some people behaving very bizarre, some people Mm -hmm. starting to really look to become more spiritual. Some people, you know, like I said, it has to do with your polarity. The people that are kind of good at heart anyway are, 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 are good people are becoming better. They're looking to become more spiritual. They're looking to become more service to others on their planet. They're looking to uh, become more loving and helpful to people. And people that have struggled with, uh, um, you know, I'm sad to say mental illness, they're they're getting hit really hard. People that have struggled with negative feelings of about themselves or negative feelings about the world or another people, they're mm-hmm. those negative feelings and thoughts are, are being enhanced and, and they're, and they're becoming yeah. very, re, they're becoming very triggered and reactionary to, to just about anything. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. Um, and here's something else too, that, that I've been meaning to ask you in 2010, I had a dream where I sent myself back in time from 26 years into the future because the critical mass wasn't high enough or where it needed to be for this current awakening. And when someone asked me, who are you? I answered that I'm a master copy of myself. During the Electric Sun episode of Cosmic Disclosure, you mentioned that we're receiving help from higher dimensional beings and are given information in our dreams to help us progress at the end of this major cycle. And when I heard that, Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, that's exactly what I was told in this dream that I had in 2010. And my comment is written and time-stamped in one of my forums dating back to February 9th, 2010, when I had this dream. So how does one differentiate between dreams, time travel, and reality? Well... It you have you know you have to use your own discernment. You're you're going to know deep, especially you know if you have. It, it's also going to depend if you have a, a, a strong connection to your higher self. You're going to be able mm-hmm. to discern these things a lot better. If you're a person out there that's kind of new to all this stuff, uh, then you know you you got to be a little bit careful. You can't just willy nilly go in and. Uh, uh, any uh, voice or any uh, thought being that tries to connect with you and says that it's positive, you can't go, oh, okay, cool. He says that, you know, it says it's loving, let's talk, you know. But if, you know, you've, you've been working on your on your self spiritually, you've been connecting with your higher self through meditation and you've been doing the inner work, then you're going to have developed your discernment a lot better. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, time travel, time is a very, very tricky thing because it's it's tied in very, very much with consciousness as well. One of the things that, you know, we learned in um, not just the, uh, the the programs that, you know, fall under the MyLab program, uh, most people want to think that everything in the MyLab program is MKUltra, and that's, that's just not the truth, but... Mm-hmm. 
in, in these programs when they were teaching uh, uh, remote viewing and remote influencing, one of the things that uh, you realize when you're doing uh, the, the black ops above uh, military type remote viewing is that if, let's say you come up with a target for a remote viewer, okay, and you write down coordinates on an on a index card and you put it in an envelope and it passes by three different people and then the remote viewer opens it, looks at these uh, alphanumeric coordinates and uh, they do a reading. And uh, this reading is for some information in the future. Well, that future that they're looking into is going to be affected by the consciousness and the belief system of the person who created that target. It's not necessarily going, it's going to be, that's why I call it a probable future because it, you know, like, you know, let's say, you know, you have a, a belief that, uh, the, the future is negative and uh, there's going to be a pole shift and uh, there's going to be a kill shot event where the world is eaten with fire from the sun. <clears throat> and you write down these coordinates and you give it to a remote viewer. That's what they're going to, they're going to see something like that. But if they're, they're more than likely going to see something like that, the chance is really good. But if you, if you believe that it's going to be a golden age and, and uh, that type of thing, you're going to uh, – the, the consciousness is, is just an amazing thing that we're just barely starting in mainstream. We're barely starting to get an idea about, you know, the idea, you know, that we have a shared consciousness. And people worry that, you know, it's like, you know, oh, you're talking about a hive mind. It's, <laughs> we already have a shared consciousness. And we – are co-creating what is going on in this world right now with our shared consciousness. It's just that a lot of these negative groups that know about this power are using our co-creative consciousness against us. They're, they're planting seeds and, and movies and uh, on, on the news and false flag events and our, our wide band of emotions are triggers for our our consciousness. And if they can get us, uh, uh, all of us all scared, like in a nine 11 event, then they can create, they can create a new timeline and get us to choose this new timeline with our co-create our co-creative consciousness and head down it as a group. So there, there is so much that we are as a people have been that we've had kept from us about our true power as individuals and as a group that we are going to be learning. Well, it does uh, put us in a difficult position as alternative news reporters and writing articles. You know, I, I have a website called how to exit the matrix and I have to cover all these things, but yet, you know, the key is, is not to focus on it and not to put any emotion into observing, you know, the truth about exactly. what's happening and not focusing on it. And, you know, um, a lot of people, I mean, I was, I had to go down that path for at least eight months, started out with Cameron Day about the false light beings. That just, you know, started blowing me away about uh, that whole false light campaign. But, you know, it was a learning curve, and I learned about it, and I had to move on and, uh, and realize, and, you know, I still have my website updated every day with wonderful things. But I have to now, you know, try to... Um, share and focus on what we need to be doing and how we can help heal people and get through this time. And what, you know, I appreciate you sharing that the information that you're sharing because, um, you know, you are, you're a leader in, in bringing through information uh, about your experiences. And a lot of people have a question about you and they want to know how you're able to talk about all these things and how the government is allowing this when they've been trying to keep this from us for so long. I imagine it's not much different than me talking about it and still being here. You know, if they want to screw with our Internet here and there, that's fine, but we're highly protected and we stand in our own sovereignty and our own power and basically our, we know what we're here to do. So... 
could you could you give everybody sure. the, the yeah. answer to that question? Sure. Yeah. There's there's a couple of things to that. Um, you know, I I have gotten my fair share of death threats. I um, there's you know because of you know I've there's been a massive uh, disinformation campaign that has been put out against me. Uh, especially by the AI profit group. They were, they did not like the information about artificial intelligence that I put out. I put out quite a bit of really damning information. And uh, the, uh, these groups have been very disappointed in um, how much they, you know, how they have, have not been able to totally destroy me the way they wanted to in uh, the alternative community. That's one of the ways that they were trying to take me down was just take me down uh, credibility-wise. Uh, secondly, I've uh, I've had to install, uh, you know, video cameras and uh, some other uh, things I won't uh, talk about, uh, security measures. Uh, I've had break-in attempts to my home uh, on uh, two different occasions now that were pretty serious. And uh, <clears throat> a lot of people that follow my Facebook site know that, uh, and I, I, I decided not to tell the full information about this because uh, some actual, some well-known researchers and other people have been so heavily attacking me. I didn't want my family and children to be a part of their attacks, but um you know, there we did have uh, a group that uh, intruded into our house, and uh, uh, you know, there uh, it was a, a very scary situation. Um, the people saw on the internet that I uh, talked about these tall blondes with the real tall foreheads that had six fingers. Um, the uh, my son wouldn't stop talking about it my four-year-old son you know said i mean he was freaked out uh he had woke up with a bloody nose there was blood in his bed uh, you know he he talked about the uh yellow-haired men that took him in an airplane in the front of the house and i mean it, it really freaked us out and uh, mm -hmm. um it, it uh when we were at uh Gaim, uh, television and I was describing on one of the episodes that they recorded a bunch of different beings and they put up a picture. My kids were up there with me. They put up a picture of the basically the closest we could find to that group. Um, you know, my daughter and son were back in the recording room and they got very upset. Um, so, you know, the, and, you know, I, I was, I was told that, I do have a certain amount of protection, but it is tied karmically to to it's tied to me and karmically how I behave and think. I can open myself up to attacks mm -hmm. with uh, fear if, or any kind with, of doubt. Yeah, yeah, and or, that that, you know, that that was basically that was that was basically my question too. Why isn't the sphere of being alliance helping to keep you safe and healthy? Yes, and they, they I mean they are. They are. They're helping me to a certain point, but they there's been so many things that I've you know, um I I was having meetings to where I was just really busting hard the uh SSP Alliance Council about why, you know, they would not allow me access to some of their healing technology that I knew was a floor mm -hmm. below when I was about to have surgery. And mm -hmm. um, finally, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Gonzalez, um, that's, that's his pseudonym, it's not his real name, he's, he finally told me that, listen, he said, this, the, the Blue Avians are the ones that didn't want you to have this healing technology. And I was like, what? <laughs> and and because he's been in contact with them about the same amount of time as I have. And he said, yeah, he said, they said that it is uh, part of your, uh, it is uh, part of your karmic cycle. You're still dealing with a lot of your karmic cycle that, uh, you know, 
you know, I'm out there talking about people need to uh, forgive others and forgive their self to stop the wheel of karma when I haven't totally forgiven myself for things that I was forced to be involved in when I was in these programs. And therefore, I haven't stopped the wheel of karma with myself yet. So, you know, there's mm. certain things that, you know, I, I'm I'm only human. You know, I'm no guru. I'm no special teacher or I'm I'm no I'm no special than anyone else. I I have flaws about myself that I need to work on and you know, it's something that uh you know, I need to address and it's uh when I've told people that you know, uh have joked around about this being kind of a uh golden rule hippie kind of uh uh message you know, I've told them, I said, you know, this is not an easy path to walk. Trying to, to to love those who are hating you, to love yourself and when you've really shined the light inside and seen all the dark places and uh, to try to constantly, uh, you know, have thoughts of service to others and to constantly be of higher vibrational uh, uh, you know, try to, of everything, try to be higher vibrational. That's very difficult in in this environment. Mm-hmm. And you know, I I fall short. You know, I I'm I'm not I'm not an ascended being by any means. So you well, know, I'll tell I you what, the Corey. Price for that. I'll tell you what. Dolores Cannon said that the quickest and best way to overcome karma is through forgiveness. It's that simple. It is. It's it's that simple, and it's that incredibly hard at the same time. Yeah. Well, what I found, Corey, as a life coach, is is many people are so involved in being service to others that they don't stop and take the time to seriously work on themselves. Nor do they have you know time alone where they can do that. Some of us spent a year or two years alone working on ourselves before I ever met Greg. I was by myself. Um, you know, in between a marriage, you know, that was, I spent time way by myself in the marriage too. So it does, it does take the work and uh, everybody has to do it. That's the one part that no, no, nobody's going to do for us is that one part. And it, it does seem hard, but it truly is simple and it's magic. I mean, our thoughts and our words are truly magic and you can just come up with the simple incantation to look in the mirror and do a little white magic on yourself and just tell yourself how much you love yourself and tell yourself you completely forgive yourself that this is yes. uh, an illusion, an experience, and you were just playing a part and a role in it. And watch watch how quickly you are protecting yourself because your aura becomes so golden and hard around you where nothing can affect you. And then you can also share that with your family and you basically can protect yourself. And then you know, then they can, then the Spear Being Alliance can support you and your actions. So hey, you just had a life coaching session. <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that you're an introvert like Michelle and me. So I'm sure it's not easy for you to come out on radio and Guy M TV to talk about this. Yeah, I'm a INFJ. I think is what. Oh, uh, but yes. yeah, I'm an <laughs> INFP. Yeah, we're both yeah. INFPs. I think yeah. that's what my so wife I... is. Yeah. But yeah, I'm a high, highly introverted. Um, when the uh, raw tear air was uh, telling me that uh, I was going to be speaking uh, in front of this group <laughs> of uh, the the this Federation Council on their behalf, uh, speaking in front of the uh, uh, SSP council and uh, in the future I was going to be speaking in front of uh, groups of people down here I was like uh, <clears throat> I don't think so <laughs> I said you know I have a very weak voice <laughs> uh, I, I talk for 45 minutes and then I start to lose my voice you know and I'm uh, I'm great I can write I can I can sit there and write my thoughts out and sound somewhat mm-hmm. intelligent but I'm not a public speaker. <laughs> I'm like, you guys are not picking the right person here. And uh, they were 
adamant that, you know, I was who they wanted to do it. And I was like, uh, okay. But, um, uh, you know, I don't know why <laughs> uh, they, they would pick an introvert over, you know, an extrovert. I know. You know, and it's funny, too, because I was told by a psychic, Sherry Elise, a number of years ago, that I'd be speaking in front of large groups of people and I'd be doing radio shows. And the first thing I told her is, that's never going to happen. <laughs> Not this introvert. <laughs> and here I am doing a radio yeah. show. I've had several conferences, in 5 d conferences here and in Los Angeles. And she was right, but I would never have thought that. I'm a, you know, if, and I've told so many people this. If there's a party going on, and envision a square room. I would be in one of the corners watching people. That, that's If you want to find me at a big party, which I probably wouldn't go to to begin with, if I right. did, that's where I would be, in one of those corners. Yeah, that's me too. I'm a people watcher. I would be sitting there yes. quietly watching people making it, making idiots of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> yes, in general. Um, now, are are you familiar with Sherry Wild? She's a contactee. No, I'm, and that's uh, I'm not real familiar with a whole lot of different contactees and different huh? a lot of different people's work. And I get asked about stuff a lot of times and. And I, I really don't know about a lot of these different uh, people and a lot of work. And, um, I mean, I'm just now uh, getting to to read, uh, trying to get to read book one of The Law of One. My wife read it. Mm-hmm. Uh, David Wilcox has been pushing, you know, telling me I needed to read it. And, uh, uh, you know, I just, uh-huh. I haven't, uh, I haven't really done it and i you know i know i need to but uh what what yeah. what, what is what do you well uh actually what, I, I would like to ahead. talk later on about the the law of one the harvest because i've read the law, the law of one and i don't necessarily agree with some of the stuff that's in there but uh anyway sherry wild is a contactee who has connections to one of the gray races and michelle and i were watching one of sherry's videos where she stated that in 2009 time was stopped for three days while extraterrestrials would read the individual vibration of every person on the planet. Are you aware of this event happening in 2009? No. Okay. Just curious about that. I'm not, I'm not well, saying it didn't what have it was... happen. I'm just I'm not aware of, of that now. Mm-hmm. Well, from what I understand, it, it goes back to what I was saying about everybody having um, their – prior soul experiences and trying to basically figure out, uh, well, not figure out, but help people along who weren't awakened at that point, which I actually wasn't until 2010. I was completely asleep. Uh, based on their their soul's experiences and what their soul had in store for them, if they hadn't awakened yet, they needed to trigger. And um, also that uh, when this waves of, of energy were to come in, um, they're, you know, they're talking, some people are talking about truly um, these um, abilities, truly these abilities for the people who are ready for them to start experiencing um, extreme psychic powers and perhaps even some people uh, being able to do things like um, telekinesis, um, maybe even vibrate themselves right out of this reality like the Mayans did. So, that's why we were we're kind of you know studying that right now, and that's why we were interested in that uh, kind of information. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, you know, for most most of these um, these groups that are highly advanced, I mean, they realize that time is a um, an illusion, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I mean, for them, I mean, uh, stopping it for Three days. I mean, it, it. I mean, they they experience time time in a totally different way than we do. So I, I mean, they a lot of a lot of these beings uh, can can come in and um, uh, experience uh, a uh, compressed or uh, expanded amount of time. Uh, uh, while in our midst and uh, while we're experiencing the same linear time that we normally do. 
Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, time time is uh, is is a, is a very interesting thing in its own right. Mm-hmm. Now, there's a comment in the chat room from Kim Burnett who says that uh, I love Sherry Wild. She's awesome. She backs up Corey a great deal. So there you go. There you go. Yeah. Hey, there's also. Yeah, I, um, I just, I just, oh, I just, um, I just haven't heard of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of these people, and I haven't had the time to look into their their information. I, mm-hmm. it just, it, it does, it doesn't mean that I disagree with it or that I think their information is not true. Just, I, ha- I haven't had time to look into it. Well, what do we need to do to give you that time? <laughs> Are you still oh. working? Are you still working during the day? Oh my gosh. Uh well, I I'm working completely on this right now. Oh good. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. yeah, my uh, other my other career uh in the IT field was pretty much uh decimated um when uh, I was When they found out who you were. <laughs> yeah, I was kind okay. of uh I was kind of outed before I could uh, take certain uh, precautions and that kind of thing and get things set up. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, all the powers that be and all that already knew who I was when I was putting out information under my pseudonym. But uh, uh, I had, I was on uh, a bunch of different uh, uh, vendor lists, my company was, and uh, I uh, immediately got tossed off of those lists and uh, it's, it's I, I really can't get uh work doing uh, uh what I do <laughs> now so understandably <laughs> yeah <laughs> well but, Corey, I, I mean if I go if I were to go in now for a job interview or anything the first thing they everyone does is they google your name and yes. they'll be like oh you the guy that talks to bluebirds <laughs> <laughs> yeah that'd be like uh, me yeah. trying to get a job as a child and family therapist right now you know and that's my background <laughs> but I'm sure they would analyze me. Now, you've you've met with many different galactic races. Does does everyone have a general consensus of who source or creator is or do some races have a varying opinion? You know, we haven't talked mainly mainly what we've talked about are is the um grand experiment mm-hmm. that is going on here in the solar system. And uh, the only uh, part that they've talked about when it comes to, uh, I guess, their type of theology is that they have talked about they are just as much a part of this grand experiment as we are and Mm -hmm. that they understand that there are these uh, higher density or almost angelic type realms above them and like like an onion – going up until uh you reach what every what they all seem to call source so um what they each personally think of or feel when they say source they haven't shared with me but they have all generally kind of used that uh that term mhm well, to your knowledge, do any other galactic races acknowledge Christianity or Jesus? Um, to, I mean that uh, that <laughs> haven't come up. That uh, the only thing I didn't that, think it would. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that didn't come up. I mean, the only thing that uh, uh, I I brought you know to raw tear air. Uh, I uh, uh, told him uh, that uh, I was raised a Christian and a Christian, uh, is it, you know, do you have a problem with that? And uh, uh, he didn't communicate anything back. He just looked with his hands out and he, he just kind of bowed his head. And uh, he, he didn't roll his eyes? <laughs> no. So I mean, but uh, I haven't had a conversation about Christianity, Muslim, Buddhism, or anything like that with any uh, non-terrestrials. 
Okay, well, let me change the subject. Let's talk about some Dracos. Um, mm, great. I, I, have, <laughs> I have heard that some people are saying that basically um, the big guys have left the building and are throwing the lower class reptilians under the bus. <laughs> Um, that they're, you know, you've talked about trying to make a deal to um, to give the royals a safe passage out of the solar system before these energetic waves come and things. I was wondering, did that swap take place? Is my first question. Have the no, royals didn't. given a safe, a safe passage out? No, they really, really, really wanted to get out, and uh, that was denied. They were not given. Uh, safe passage out, and uh, um, yeah, that when they tried to make that deal, that's when uh, everything went south with all of the uh, secret Earth government syndicates that were uh, that had uh, occult occult type uh, um, connections uh, that the people call like the Illuminati that. Uh, pretty much worship the reptilians and the Draco. Um, they were uh, basically betrayed by their gods, and uh, they all of a sudden all these groups started infighting to see, uh, you know, who was going to give up who to save whose butt. And that's the, the Draco actually in a roundabout. We did the SSP Council a favor because that's when we received a lot of our uh, Illuminati and Cabal defectors. Uh, they they came with a lot of information and promises to take p- part in future uh, global tribunals against people if they were put in a um, off-world witness protection type program, them and their families. And uh, a lot of these people, these uh, cabal uh, defectors were taken off planet to secret locations and they uh, uh, different alliance groups, including Earth Alliance groups, have been taken to them to pump them for information and uh, to see if that matches the information that the uh, Earth Alliance the Earth Alliance did a series of massive super hacks uh, against the Five Eye uh, intelligence agencies and uh, European and U.S. government groups and uh, received a massive amount of intelligence. And Edward Snowden's information was completely decrypted recently, like I believe in May or June. All of that information has been collated to where they have it database in a database and they can look at it and uh all of this information is is what's being correlated for a massive data dump for a full disclosure event here in the future and uh the um the the cat the catalyst for a lot of this was when the draco tried to make this deal to where they could leave the solar system and uh they were it, it was them and the committee of 200 that worked close to them were very upset when this was made public and uh, their, the lower echelons found out about it because this basically, it, it, it caused chaos within the ranks and um, it, it caused a, some very high ranking uh, uh, different Illuminati uh, cabal Uh, insiders to defect and uh, uh, provide information. Well, did the Earth's consciousness know that she would be used in such a way to trap some of these Dracos, and basically when she shifts her vibration, they either have to switch polarities or be returned source to be reconstituted for some other kind of energy? Are you familiar with that? Yeah, I think that I think that from the very beginning, the uh, the Earth and the Sun and the whole solar system knew that it was a part of this giant, uh, basically honey trap mm-hmm. that uh, was going to catch all the negatives in it, and uh, these 
the sphere being alliance group, which are basically guardians of some galactic type of guardians of some sort. Uh, they haven't claimed to be uh, raw from the law of one. Uh, they haven't claimed not to be, they haven't, they don't call themselves the blue avians. They don't call themselves the sphere being alliance. That's what the SSP alliance has banned them. They don't call themselves anything. When you mm-hmm. ask them who they are, they'll say what their name is. That's how they respond. Mm-hmm. But um, they, uh, this, this seems to be a ancient and long orchestrated plan. Mm-hmm. And everybody here on the planet is part of it. They just need to remember that. And uh, that's yes. how we're going to change this whole reality. So when the earth raises her vibration, they call that like the shift. Is is that something that um, that do you know if that's coming in the next couple of years or I mean is this is this shift coming this year or is this is still going to be something that unfolds with with time? It's our it's the shift is underway. It's right. Um, it's but been the happening. It's go, it's going to continue to happen at an accelerated rate, and it's something that's going to continue for. A long time. It's, uh, I mean, it's not something that is going to uh, just boom happen. It it is a uh, gradual process that's going to continue to happen for a long time. And uh, that, I mean, that's the best answer I can give you. You know, Matt Kahn talks about September 28th being a day for ascension and. Other people are mentioning September 23rd as the day of ascension. You know, personally, I have a hard time believing any of these dates because, well, mainly all That's time, dangerous. all time. Yeah, well, number one, it's dangerous to put a date on anything, but all time exists at once anyway. What are your thoughts on these dates of ascension? Yeah, you you just took the word out of my mouth. All time exists at once. So, um, what controls disclosure controls. Um, a lot of the stuff that we're talking about is not only these energetic waves that are coming in, but it's also our mass consciousness. Mm -hmm. So that's not something anyone can put a date on. And anyone that's putting a date out there, that date's going to come, it's going to go. I mean, every year, September or October, someone's putting out a date. And it comes and goes. Uh, even a broken clock is right twice a day. So eventually something's <laughs> yes. going to happen in September, October, and someone's going to say, oh, I was right. But just about every well, time I... an earthquake doesn't happen, uh, an event doesn't happen, you know. So, you know, you got to be very careful about putting those dates out there. Yeah, and one thing I do know about about the dates is that we are we are receiving a huge – a huge galactic wave of energy. And like you said, we're moving through a certain part of the universe that's actually, you know, exacerbating that. So I do know mm-hmm. that September is going to be, I mean, what people need to help wake their family up, I know you can't wake anybody up, but what people need and what people desire and want is proof of something. And, you know, they're getting the proof, but they don't understand. They think they just have a black cloud over their head, you know. They don't see that it's trying to help them to um, to wake up, really. So, right, yeah. and that's, that's why, you know, a lot of people are asking, when are the data dumps going to happen? When's this going to happen, you know? Mm-hmm. And a lot of it has to do the <clears throat> the alliances have had all of the information for the data dump distributed amongst themselves. So if one of them was to do a data dump prematurely, that would be a bad thing. You don't want to dump the data on a bunch of asleep people so that the mainstream media and the powers that still are can cover it up or discredit it. What you have to do is you have to wait for a catalyst event, Mm -hmm. something like, unfortunately, a global economic meltdown to Mm -hmm. where everybody is completely ticked off and they see all the evidence that there's been a giant Ponzi scheme, financial Ponzi scheme. And they see that all, and, and the only way that could happen is if all the politicians were in the pockets of the banksters. 
So then all of a sudden all these people are, are looking for more and more information that they would consider conspiracy theory. So now they have a thirst for this information. Then something like that, a catalyzing event, is going to make the time ripe for dumping the kind of data that Snowden had alone, let alone all this other data from the super hacks. People don't realize the NSA put all their eggs in one basket. Mm -hmm. They had tons of information about crimes against humanity, about the secret space program, about ETs, about all kinds of stuff. And the, one of the biggest files they had was, was the file that the um, uh, secret government used to blackmail certain, I mean, just about every politician and uh, financial people to do what that they is. wanted them to. So mm-hmm. they have all these blackmail files that have like all these sick you know, pedophile type crimes and, and these other things. And so all of it, I mean, this is, you know, people think of disclosure. They think of the president walking up to the microphone and saying, all right, we've been lying for about 80 years. There really are aliens. Roswell was true. Sorry, guys. Now, you know, <laughs> end of speech. That's not what disclosure is going to be. Full no. disclosure is going to be, information that entails all the crimes against humanity that these uh, uh, secret government groups have been doing, it's going to have to do with all of these hidden technologies. And the existence of extraterrestrial life is just a small part of it. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always said that we're going to take a step backwards before we take a huge quantum leap forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're going to have... Yeah, we're going to have, we're going to be, people are going to go through like the five steps of like when people, when uh, someone dies, you know, they're going to go through like denial, you know, acceptance, uh, anger, you know, remorse. And uh, then, you know, people are going to have to go through a healing process. And uh, before we go into what the uh, secret space program guys are calling an AD after disclosure, disclosure transitional civilization is what they have planned out to where this this vast secret space program infrastructure that's out there is going to be handed to the people to where you know we will be able to begin this uh, Star Trek type era that we've been promised for all these years and dreamt of we've got to go through we've got to go through kind of a dark process first of finding out some some horrible truths truths and then dealing with it and then growing and then moving on mm-hmm. well i've always said that the first thing that if we could take over the media immediately and use the television in the correct manner and in, in a better manner we could change things instantly i mean people listen if they don't know about what television does they they listen to everything that's on television so that would be a, a really intense thing to do, and maybe that's planned as part of the part of the unfolding. There's so much planned that we don't know about with white hats out there working, preparing, getting ready to just be able to step in once everything does begin to oh, yeah. fall. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, when a cat- catalyzing event happens, and uh, they they already have the ability to. Uh, take over uh, the emergency frequencies of all the airwaves. Uh, They have the ability to bypass the mainstream media. Uh, I think that if the catalyzing event happens and if it's as bad as what I think is going to be, even uh, the blue avians said it was going to get worse before it gets better. You know, I think that this is something that, you know, even the mainstream media are going to drop the charade <laughs> and yeah. uh, say, hey, you know, and then everything's going to be on the table. Well, we've and, called uh, it the re- cosmic wild card. But what are you call? Yeah. What are you calling? What are you calling the catalyzing event? Is it the conglomerate of the whole world economic system failing and people realizing how much they've relied on money and that it's controlled them, or is it that 
plus other things? What is the cataloging event? Well, what has been used as an example would be a collapse of the uh, global Babylonian money magic slave system. And the uh, and it uh, collapsing in such a dramatic manner that there is it is obvious that it has been a giant Ponzi scheme, and it's mm-hmm. obvious that all the politicians and all the banksters and financial people have been involved in it on some level, and the well and it would be a catalyst in angering the people and making them because they, I mean, people are going to be losing a lot and uh, it's, it's going to shut down commerce. It's going to do all kinds of things. And the, and the people are going to be sitting on the edge of their seat wanting to know, you know, what the, Hey, what's mm-hmm. going on and what else has gone on that, you know, if hope this, you're ready to go on TV, Corey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, you know, you know if, and, and, if this much has happened, what else has been going on? And then exactly. they'll be willing to they'll be willing to look at all this other information that they just would have uh, brushed off as conspiracy theory before. Right. You know, and, and speaking of money, in Illinois, a drill bit from a well brought up a two hundred thousand year old bronze coin from a depth of 114 feet. According to the Illinois State Geological Survey, the deposits containing the coin are between 200,000 to 400,000 years old and is not identifiable to any known currency on this planet. So what this means is that there were previous civilizations on Earth who were also economic slaves of some form. As far as you know, are there any other civilizations out there who use money and religion as forms of subservience, control, and conformity? Well, first of all, there we know in the secret space program of many more ancient c- civilizations than the mainstream knows about. And these civilizations had their own breakaway civilizations, just like we do now. And mm-hmm. they moved underground, and they had space programs. So there are some of these underground uh, networks, large cities that are from humans that are from civilizations, you know, 400,000 years ago, very advanced, and they're ancient earth breakaway civilizations. So, Mm -hmm. and uh, many of them have been coming up pretending to be gods and when we became more sophisticated, have been contacting people pretending to be ETs from other star systems. So that's something that we've had to deal with as well. Now, as far as the ET groups that the uh, um, ICC, the uh, Interplanetary Corporate Conglomerate, has been doing commerce with, they work all on bartering systems and trade. So... I I don't know. Uh, Money is a very low uh, density, low vibrational kind of uh, um, transaction, kind of, uh, you know, that's kind of a low vibrational kind of control system. And Mm -hmm. uh, the the different groups that are traveling around out there in space are are not uh, carrying around coins or folded up paper in their pockets. Or a Bible. (laughs) <laughs> or, or you know, any type of, uh, you know, organized religion. A lot of them mm-hmm. uh, have, like, these natural law and uh, uh, beliefs of, you know, similar to, you know, we are all one and a part of source, different varieties of those kind of beliefs from uh, what I've been able to tell. You know, and I firmly believe that, you know, all religious texts should be four words long. Love everyone, respect everything. It's that simple. Yeah. It, you know, the golden rule, you know, just pass the golden rule around and everything, if everybody lived by the golden rule, everybody would be uh, happy. Michelle, I can't hear you. 
Thank you, Greg. There's a reason for that. <laughs> but we are all from the same source. I was just talking away. We're all from the same source. I mean, we we when we do something to one other person, we're doing it to everybody and ourselves at the same time. Absolutely. And that's, yeah. that's what this. That's what the law of one actually, you know, is about. And you can understand the law of one without having to read. There are a lot of distortions about the law of one as well, and one of that being the harvest. Um, in your opinion, is the harvest? Um, you know, they've talked about the harvest. Is what is the harvest? Is this um, a good thing? I know you haven't read the book, but surely you've talked yeah. to David. Um, you know, we've when I when David and I have talked about the law of one, we've talked about how it's applied to uh, the like the conversations I've had with Raw to your air, and I've. You know, I've told him, you know, this is the way this being talks. It's very strange. Uh, it seems to mean all these different things. It's, you know, and, and he says, man, it sounds just like, you know, these conversations in the law of one, you know, and, and, you know, we've talked, you know, you know, about that, but the, the harvest, I'm not fully versed in what all of that is and means to be honest. And, mm-hmm. You know, I don't mean, I don't know if that just means an ascension. I don't know if there's other uh, interpretations for it. Um, I've heard, like, all these different people that have different ideas, like aliens are going to come and UFOs and pick up certain people, like, you know, some sort of uh, ET rapture kind of thing. I've heard I mean, I've heard all kinds of uh, different uh uh, ideas on what their interpretation is of the harvest, and uh, I, I haven't, I haven't read the book. I, I mean, I haven't. I need. A, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, to me, something isn't right about that because when we, we harvest corn, not people. <laughs> you yeah. Know? Yeah, and these higher density beings, they have. They have a lot of difficulty with uh, not only our time frames, but with our phrasing and our wording. So, you know, a lot of times they will use a uh, an example, or, or they, you know, and it, it 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 can be applied in different ways, or it can be thought of in different ways. So, um, because it's um, they are. Uh, pretty far removed from us and um, ways of thinking. You know, a lot of people try to overlay our way of thinking on top of the higher density beings, and, you know, you can't do that. And um, so, and people get very, um, I've had people get very upset when I'm, when I say something like, you know, we as third, fourth density, uh, uh, beings can't comprehend or understand the existence and uh, fully understand the thoughts and minds of, uh, you know, sixth, seventh, eighth density beings. And they're like, you you know, you're, uh, you know, that's insulting my intelligence, you know? And I'm like, well, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, we're, we're not there yet. (laughs) I'm insulting my intelligence too. You know, we're, you know, we're not there yet, you know, so, you know, I, I, I don't pretend to fully understand, uh, you know, you know, you know, where they're coming from on everything, you know, it's, they come from a a different uh, vibratory state and they've been through this uh, uh, ascension uh, matrix and made it uh, several layers of the onion up higher than us, and uh, you know. Yes, I do know. I I have a feeling that the harvest is more of um, like the the same thing about any kind of religion or anything that happens. It gets twisted, and I, I'm feeling like it's more of the vibrational. Um, separation or conglomerate of people who are vibrating very high will tend to start to gravitate more together, and then the people who are vibrating 
very low will tend to to stick together and uh and that will be more of like the harvest in my opinion but yes i've I've read it all I've read it all let me ask you um I want to go back to to trading you know we we were talking about money and then they you know other other extraterrestrial civilizations uh trade things and well, this is not an easy subject to talk about, but you've talked about the human slave trade and the secret safe space program being, you know, involved in that. And what is what is it about the human that makes us such a commodity and will we be able to help rescue those humans that they've actually, you know, abducted and traded away? Um, well, yeah, the... Humans, uh, there's, we're unique in uh, several different ways. Um, on our planet, the diversity in humanity is rare. Usually on different planets, everybody is pretty much close to the same. I mean, we've got all these different, we call them races, but we're all the same race. We just have different upholstery you know, colors of upholstery. Um, but, uh, you know, we have all all this genetic diversity amongst just what we call humans. And we've been tinkered with so much over the many, many millennia that uh, we have a wider band of emotions than most beings out there. Uh, they have the same emotions as us, but uh, I'm told that our 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 spectrum of emotions is wider than most of them, and that's a a good thing and a negative thing as as we see in the news mm-hmm. also also our genome has been spliced so many times mm-hmm. that it is um it it readily splices to the genome of other beings, so we're easily uh, spliceable and, and uh, hybridize with other beings very easily. And then there's the uh, other things that are somewhat obvious. We're good at slave labor. Believe it or not, mm-hmm. we're, extre- we're extremely good engineers. There is a disturbing sexual uh, component to it. And also um, there are uh, certain... Uh, Entities out there, beings that use different parts of humans for sustenance. Mm-hmm. So, now, are we going to you... be able to to help um, retrieve some of those bodies? I mean, as long as the body yes. dies, the soul's okay. But I'm talking about right. they're taking the bodies, and then they're yeah. they're grabbing the soul out of them with their technology, and then they're putting them in another body where they'll never never be able to. The soul will never be able. Well, they think it will never be able to be extracted, so they're kind of like caught the, there uh, forever. They've uh, they've been for some time now have been rescuing a great number of these uh, individuals, and when they get to the ones that they're able to save, they are extremely traumatized. Have, I mean the PTSD. The term PTSD is thrown down, thrown around willy nilly, pretty easily now these days. But these people are seriously traumatized with some of the things they've been put through, and so they, um, there is a uh, ancient uh, Earth breakaway civilization that you mentioned earlier that was the Mayan group, and. They broke away, and they have um, – they're a fourth, fifth density group now. And they are still interacting with the uh, secret uh, SSP alliance group, and they still have some uh, bases down in South America, but they're mostly off-planet. And they have colonies in the Pleiades. And these places are basically like paradises. And they've been taking 
uh, these people to these uh, places, they, and, and they also take other ET groups, but they, they take uh, damaged uh, corporeal bodies and damaged souls in, to, to these locations, and they help them heal. And they've been helping these people, and at some point in the future, they're going to be given the choice after disclosure to return back to Earth or to stay on these uh, uh, these planets that they have these uh, colonies on that are, are very, I'm told, very Eden-like. And they have... Uh, very high vibratory technologies that uh, are very wonderful for helping people heal from traumas. And uh, one of the things, uh, a lot of the uh, Secret Space Program Alliance groups, uh, they've done some very very horrible things in their pasts, and some of them are extremely damaged. These are not angels. Um, when they are when when everything is said and done and we are in a post disclosure world and things are rolling and uh going the way they should down here on earth they are also going to be taken to these colonies to where they are going to be offered uh this uh, uh healing and uh 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 repair of their psyches and their soul and all the damage that was done with them. Well, and are those, I mean, are those healing technologies going to be available to us as well as like, you know, what about all of this technology that the government has, like the the underground trains being able to go from one place to another? I mean, how long yeah. do you see all that unfolding to where, I mean, even the free, the free energy technology, my really good friend, Fernando Bosa is um, he's already downloaded all of this all of these schematics in his head he has you know 20 ideas for free energy and healing and everything but he doesn't have the financial stability to back it right now and and the consciousness well, on the planet is not backing that but i assume that's right. coming soon yeah and 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 none of that's going to really be allowed until after uh, a uh, full uh, dis- uh post disclosure uh, situation, and uh, they're going to be bringing, as I said, all of this technology down to Earth, and also we're going to be given Who access. Who is uh, Well, Who the secret, the secret space program okay. alliance, and the Earth Alliance are going to bring all of this technology into the open after the full disclosure event and the data dumps, because all the, the existence of all this technology is going to be in the data dumps. So everyone's going to know it exists. And then, then they're going to want to know where it is and they're going to want access to it. And also when this happens, it's going to be the end of financial systems. This is going to, this is hard for people to fathom because they've been, over thousands of years, brainwashed into thinking, I got to have money. Mm-hmm. So it, there's not going to be a financial system anymore. It, it's, you know, people are going, you know, they're going to bring down, you know, like the replicator technology. They're going to bring down free energy, the uh, light and vibratory healing technologies. Uh, you know, they've, they've got, you know, there's no reason for people to be in wheelchairs, people to be uh, going through chemotherapy or having cancer. There's, there's no reason for any of that to exist on the earth. And their mandate has been that they're going to bring it to all of humanity, everyone on the world at the same time, not just to uh, the richest people in America, in Europe, uh, and then, like, uh, the people and villages in Africa have access to it down the line. They're going to bring it down. They're going to bring it down to everybody and give everyone access to this technology. 
And so everybody who, you know, who has some very difficult diseases right now or things that have cropped up, cancer, um, you know, just try to hang in there and, you know, do your, uh, there's a lot of people doing alternative therapies because they know how horrible chemotherapy is, you know, radiation and possibly if they need surgery, well, maybe they don't even have the money right now because of the astronomical cost to have surgery. So, there, you know, a lot yeah, of people I, are giving up hope, and I just wanted to, to give hope and let them know that, you know, um, your your thoughts and your intention on staying on this planet until this time is great greatly needed. <laughs> yes, and I, I want this technology down just as fast as anyone else. I have some loved ones that have some um, some of these diseases that we're talking about, and, uh, you know, I, I would like this to... Uh, come down and happen sooner than later. But uh, yeah, you know, all do. like I said, yeah, I I, I can't put well, a, a time time uh, frame on when it's going to happen because uh, a lot of it is very much up to us awakening and our mass yeah. consciousness. And uh, uh, you know, we're we're going to make it happen. You know, there's yeah. not going to be we're not going to be saved by. Uh, ETs, we're not going to be saved by any, this one group. We're going to save ourselves. Yes, you and know, that's, our, that's really go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, that's really what we talk about in all of the shows is raising our consciousness, uh, raising our vibration, and, and actually, you know, intending to um, to connect with the collective consciousness like the hundredth monkey effect and it's happening and it's working. And, you know, I think we've got a pretty good pulse on people who are finding in 5d and finding information just by searching the internet. They just seem to fall in the right place. And it's, it's a beautiful thing to watch unfold. So at the same time, you know, we we do have to have balance and polarity at the same time. We're seeing things crumble. We're also seeing a high acceleration in awakening people and, and the effect it's having on the collective human consciousness. So I think we're in a, I really do think we're in a really good place. And I just wanted to tell you, this whole time that we've been talking, Greg's computer actually completely crashed and he had to get back on. And we do have some questions to keep going. Um, We're at the, um, we've got about 40 minutes available still. If you're willing to stay, I know we've kept you quite long. Are you willing to stay for a few more questions? Yeah, I, I don't know if I can stay that much longer because I've got a okay. uh, my my uh, now my daughter is sick too, so I I'm gonna have to help my wife here yeah. in a little bit. Um, okay. But uh, one of the things I was gonna add to what you just said is another mm-hmm. litma, litmus and thing that we can watch is that as we are awakening and you see that hundred, hundredth monkey effect you can also see all these negative groups are starting to panic. And the more they yeah. panic, the the more they're going to try to pump out the fear porn and the more they're going to try to derail us. And the more you see them doing that, the more you know that those of us on the positive side are making progress. Yes, absolutely. Go ahead, Greg. You know, Welcome you back. know, and, and, and definitely. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you know, and just like we were saying beforehand about you know extraterrestrial help, you know, the whole savior program thing. You know, the, like the Hopi said, we are the ones we have been waiting for. We're going to pull ourselves out of this. And you know, yep. also speaking of technology, what you were saying before. I have a pair of ATN Generation 3 night vision goggles, and it's hard to go 10 minutes without seeing a UFO. You know, for example, last night I saw one. And I used my laser pen to signal it, and I asked them to power up, which they did every time I asked them to do so. And when I expressed gratitude by thanking them for powering up, they powered up even brighter. Now, many other people have experienced this as well, such as James Gilliland at his Isetti Ranch. What does this mean when they power up, and who are they? Well, it could be any number of groups. We... There were so many groups that uh, after the outer barrier went up that we didn't even know were here. Um, there, all of a sudden, we started finding out that uh, there were very high density uh, beings that were here that didn't want to have anything to do with any type of intelligent beings here or, or what we think are intelligent. They were just here to study our oceans 
you know, our flora and our fauna study, uh, study the jungle's life. They were interested in the, the rich um, uh, genetic bouquet that is on this planet. And uh, they're very peaceful, loving beings. They, they just didn't want to have anything to do with us or any of the other ET groups here. They were very advanced, had uh, technology that cloaked, you know. Uh, they are now being a lot more open now that everyone knows they're here. Uh, but just about all of these beings, uh, technology is uh, operated off of, uh, you know, neural interfacing and consciousness. So when you reach out with your mind, uh, sometimes, you know, you're, you can you know you can even interfere with uh, what they're doing, but it, sometimes it's you know you're uh, reaching out with your mind. It's just like making a, a, a you know a radio transmission uh, mm-hmm. communication to them. So yes. you know you can there there are the times that you can uh, make a mistake on on the group that you uh, do that to, just to be clear. But uh, for the most part, the people uh, that have been doing that have been having positive ex- experiences, and I'm glad to hear it. Mm-hmm. But uh, there, it, it, there are so many different groups. I, you know, I couldn't give you a name of which yeah. group it is. Mm-hmm. I just think it's really cool how they telepathically interact with us. Now, are, are, are you familiar with Tavistock? No. Okay, well, Tavistock is well known for controlling public opinion. For example, if you mention Tavistock on the Godlike Productions forum, you'll get banned. Uh, One of the many avenues that Tavistock controls is the New Age agenda. With your involvement with my lab, some people would say the Sphere Being Alliance is part of Tavistock's New New Age agenda. How would you convince people that this is not part of the New Age agenda or some sort of disinformation agenda? Well, what I would first say is look at the information. Um, the anyone, you know, on the the negative side, uh, they are not going to want you to become aware of the power of your co-creative consciousness. They're not going to want you to become a more positive and loving being. Um, th- this is not mm-hmm. the message that comes from the dark side. I mean, some people are saying, um, you know, uh, oh, Corey wants you to uh, uh, become all hippie-like and loving and uh, uh, have a false paradigm of hope, and uh, that way, you know, the cabal can run all over you. Um, you know, that, that's just if, – if you put more than two minutes of thought into it, it's just ridiculous. And uh, – um, you know, it, it's as ridiculous as this uh, AI psyop meme that's being put out by a couple of, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, disinfo agents from uh, the other side. Um, it's, it, you know, uh, you you know, just fully look at the, uh, you know, there's the people that are out there saying this negative stuff. That's okay. But before you form your opinion, go and fully look at the information I've put out. And if any of it, like, triggers you and makes you feel like um, it's coming from uh, the devil or from uh, the uh, secret government as a way to mind control you, then uh, go somewhere else. It's basically a message of love anyway. Yeah. (laughs) You're, well, yeah, you're, you're not know, here to convince anybody of anything, no. Corey. You're here to tell your story, and you're here. You know, I, I feel like personally that, you know, with what you're doing, serving, and, you know, putting your life at risk to get this information out, you are trying to balance out a little of that early part of your life where you had to do, you know, things to other people. And, um, I mean, that's what I'm feeling. Is that true? It is, yeah. Yeah, and uh, and I'm fully aware. I've I've been on the other side of uh, seeing the the voice of God technology and these other technologies that are used uh, to implant uh, and uh, download information to make people uh, feel like they're channeling or downloading information. Uh, 
uh, as a part of the program, you have to be subjected to it so you know uh, when you're being targeted. There are a lot of targeted individuals out there that know when they're being hit with this technology, that know, you know, they know when they're being hit. So, you know, the, this this technology that's out there, those of us that have been in the, uh, these dark programs and have been on the operator side of it, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to use this technology on us without us knowing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now, one one other thing, I, I one of my favorite topics is uh, our origins, and it seems genetically impossible to have so many different blood types, A, B, A, B, and O, along with two different RH values, positive and negative, from allegedly two people, Adam and Eve. What's the real story about how we were here? Were we, were we genetically seeded here? Um, was our DNA manipulated by the Anunnaki? Were we seeded here by various star nations? What's the real story behind that? You know, uh, this article that I'm about to release is uh, it's going to uh, make a lot of people uncomfortable. It uh, has some information in it that uh, kind of made me uncomfortable in my last uh, the meeting I had where Gonzalez and I were uh, brought down to a uh, to meet uh, seven uh, groups, subterranean groups that are ancient Earth breakaway civilizations, and uh, they gave us their version of history. Uh, and it it matched quite a bit of what we had read on the smart glass pads and uh, about there being an original uh, uh, human genotype that was here that developed on the planet that was uh, that had been manipulated by many different groups and then mm-hmm. this uh, then this later on this group that came in that's been here for like hundreds of thousands of years that uh, has these 22 different genetic programs going on. I mean, there there is so much going on with manipulating us genetically and uh, manipulating us spiritually and uh, socially that it's, it's crazy. And uh, it is. and there are and there's so many and there's so many different competing programs amongst these ET groups. Some of them have programs that step on each other, uh, genetic programs. That's why they had uh, when they were controlling certain groups on Earth. They would have them. Uh, it would be against. They would create laws. It was against them to marry outside of their race. Uh, because they did, they didn't want to pollute their genetic experiments, you know, and um, they you know th- they had you know a lot of competing experiments going on the earth for a long time, and uh, they didn't like um, the other ET groups uh, experiment stepping on top of theirs. They didn't like the mixing of bloodlines. So, you know, there's it, it. That's a real hard one to answer because we were looking at all these uh, twenty. We're just looking at these twenty-two different uh, programs, and they were giving us all this evidence to back it up. Uh, they were a lot of times contradicting each other. So, you know, it was hard to uh, make complete heads or tails out of it even at that level, at this late of a date. Mm-hmm. On, I'm sure it's multifaceted. What, it is. And the full skinny, you know, people that just say, you know, the Anunnaki came down, they made us, we're here, a couple of ETs have tinkered with us, that's the end of the story. That's my belief system, I'm sticking to it. Mm-hmm. And it's far more complicated than that. And... Mm-hmm. uh it, I mean, it's far, far more complicated than that, and uh, uh, it, it's, you know, the there, there, are, yeah, there, there are so many different types of genetic lines and, and different uh, bloodlines 
that um, have occurred, and uh, there there are some that um, are a part of some of the original uh, human lines that were uh, on the Earth, according to these ancient Earth breakaway groups uh, that we recently talked to that gave us some evidence. We went and looked at their libraries and talked with them for a while. And uh, it, this, uh, I'm, I'm just about ready to publish this uh, article. It's quite long. I'm having to do a part one and part two. Um, mm-hmm. But it's it's going to uh, uh, it's going to challenge a lot of people in their established belief systems. Uh, and it's going to make a lot of people think. It's going to make some people angry. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is coming. Some of this information that, you know, I'm reporting, I'm putting out there with a disclaimer. Hey, these ancient Earth breakaway groups that are these subterranean groups admittedly have been deceptive with us for many thousands of years, pretending to be gods, pretending to be Mm -hmm. ETs from different star systems. So, you know, take this information with uh, that in mind and also use your discernment. Uh, You know, it's my understanding through Robert Morningsky that our human DNA is the genetic royalty of the universe because of all the galactic genetic interaction and they all seem to have some sort of claim over us. So maybe there's a battle going on for, you know, yeah. who owns they all have it, who's they all DNA. Claim. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, one of one of our N5D viewers, Vic Scribble, wants to know, anything that's not already or commonly known about the origin and purpose of RH negative blood? Yeah, I've seen a lot, a lot of information out there. Um, uh, that is, it, it's from everything that uh i've been told the scene you know it's there's a lot of lore about the rh negative uh blood um you know there were uh some illuminati people that i were talking about or I, I was talking to and they were uh you know uh uh, talking with me, uh, this this is actually when I uh, was uh, working at the Federal Reserve, um, and uh, you know they brought up the uh, they were RH, you know negative and uh, royal blood and um, you know and that you know I, I I made a remark that made them very angry you know that uh, you know that that blood type has not only been found in humans, it's been found in, uh, you know, uh, certain types of monkeys. That, you know, it's not just been in humans. And, uh, you know, uh, that's something that's been suppressed a lot, but it's been found, it's not just been found in uh, in humans. So um, there, there's a lot of belief systems and lore wrapped around a lot of stuff in, in, in the esoteric community that, you know, we've got to kind of shake loose. You know, there's there's a lot of truth in there, but there's also a lot of stuff that uh, we need to not cling so tightly to, um, you know, and kind of make our reality bubbles a little bit more permeable and, uh, you know, be ready to... Uh, you know, I, I've had to change what I believed about certain things on on many occasions in my life, and uh, you, you got to be willing to do that. Yes, and you know, one your truth today is not the same as your truth yesterday. As you begin to learn to discern, and the energies are really allowing for us to be able to see, you know, see the truth, and it just doesn't feel. It just starts feeling right, and it just becomes really ridiculous something that you may have believed, you know, yesterday or a year ago. We, every moment we're, we're changing. And, you know, as we get to the end of the show here, Corey, I think I, could, I think I can pretty much sum up what we said today and that's that all of the various ET groups are, are here. We, we are them. And we have to 
we have to raise our consciousness and our vibration, and we have to learn to get along here on the planet in this free will universe with respect to the golden rule, we ought to be able, once we get rid of money and rid of political um, tyranny, we should be able to get along here and be able to each have each ET agenda and what you know they need, whether they need trade or whether they uh, want to begin to incarnate in a human body from their race. We need to allow all of these things to happen on Earth as long as you're not hurting anyone else with the golden rule. And... Um, would you say that that's a really good wrap-up for tonight? Yeah, and uh, a lot of it starts with people that call ourselves truthers. We need to, inside the esoteric truther community, we need to quit being so fragmented, point at, point out what our, our difference is, and start pointing out what is the same. And the same is, what is the same is that we want a positive change for this world and we need to come together and co-create that and make it happen. I agree. I mean, that's the law of one. You don't even have to read the book. I think you pretty much got it, Corey. And I want to thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Uh, Thank you for joining us amidst all of our electronical problems. And uh, we would love, we can't wait to read your article and we would love to continue to publish anything from you. Um, that you that you have. So if you want to write Feel an free. article for Feel us, free. that would be yeah. great. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to thank everyone also who's listening live, uh, recorded on YouTube, or is with us right now in the Blog Talk Radio chat room. I know there's still a ton of questions from our invite 5D viewers and from the chat room that we weren't able to ask, as well as Michelle and myself. We could have gone on and on and on. <laughs> but we'd, we'd like to thank you for joining us here on N5D Radio and look forward to future episodes of Cosmic Disclosure on Gaiam TV. So if you'd like to, uh, give everybody uh, how, uh, information of how they can contact you or find you. Well, no. you t- <laughs> oh, are you talking to me? Yes. <laughs> oh, okay, all right, okay. Well, um, well, if you want to watch, uh, you know, three free um, uh, Gaiam shows to get an idea of what those are like, you can go to blueavians.com, and uh, you can watch three free episodes there. If you sign up through there, I get a small little compensation. Um, you can go to spearbeingalliance.com to uh, my website, and uh, then I do a lot of publishing on my uh Facebook site, uh, which is also Blue Avians. Awesome. Well, thank you so very much for uh, being with us once again here on N5D Radio, and we're looking forward to your new article coming out here mm-hmm. very shortly. Good night, thank you. Corey. Good night. Take care. Good night. Take care, brother. Thank you. All righty. So until the next time, uh, well, Michelle, is there anything you'd like to close with? Um. Well, I just wanted to thank everybody in the chat room. I'm sorry that I wasn't able to interact with you tonight. I just was not able to log in. Um, I encourage everyone to um, keep Greg on the radio uh, with his little introverted (laughs) self. He only comes out of the woodwork when there's something that he gets really excited about. He's just so busy. You're just so busy on N5D. But Mm -hmm. um, I would would like to encourage everyone to um, to tune in. every Thursday night to my show, Cosmic Awakening Show. And if you would like to reach one of us, you can definitely message us on the N5D Facebook page. Uh, we we try to get to those questions. Um, um, if you're friends with either one of us, you can send us um, a message on Facebook. And that's one of our number one choice at this moment of communication with all of you. I just want to I just want to let everyone know that, um, you know, the bigger picture of everything that was said tonight, there is literally nothing holding you back from ascension at this moment. Um, many of us have agreements and contracts that we've made to um, to be here at this time through the thick of it. And some people will not be able to uphold that because of the the trick that's been played, you know, the the diseases, the things from... Um, the ELF frequencies, you know, basically it it was just a little too hard. And we've got to understand 
that there will be some people going, but um, I encourage everyone out there to hang on um, and to continue to do your work. There's no reason why you couldn't raise your vibration and just vibrate right out of this if you are done. And uh, another thing is if you do happen to, um, I mean, this is a really weird thing to talk about, but if you do happen to lose your body, if you do happen to need to leave this reality, that's cool too because this this body right here is what is keeping us pretty much from being able to be uh, the human being that we were created to be, and you can always try again. (laughs) But... For those of us who are fighting hard still, um, the day is coming where we will be able to turn on that 97% of our DNA that we are not using. And it's all up to us. Uh, We can do this together, united, and we will. It already has happened, and we are moving towards it rapidly. And I want to thank everybody for their hard work and have a wonderful evening. I'm sending my love out to everyone. Good night, everyone. And, you know, maybe maybe I'll co-host another show with you. On the Cosmic Yay. Awakening show. <laughs> Yay! So, <laughs> until the next time, I wish everyone love, peace, good health, and abundance in everything that's good in life. Namaste, everyone.